Hey, what's up? I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron, and we're going to take a look at the new thin film material with the new R26 and the Redshift 3.5 update. So basically, rather than, I'll go through a little bit here and show you how it works, but honestly, it's, it's kind of tricky to understand what's exactly happening, and there's no presets or anything, so I thought I'd just go ahead and make a whole bunch of presets and give those away to you guys. Real quick, I just want to say be sure to check out DerekKirk.net for all of my content and check out our courses on CG shortcuts and my courses on Skillshare. All of these are going to be updated with new content as well with the new big changes with Redshift, so be sure to stay tuned uh, and check those out. So I thought I'd just give away these 30 materials that I've made that are all labeled with the thin film settings so you can kind of just have a quick guide and a quick jumping off point so you understand what values look like. So basically inside, let's take a look inside of this material here. And inside of our RS standard material, we go down here to thin film and we twirl that down. And we only have two settings. We have IOR and we have thickness. And basically the thickness is going to de determine the color, but it also is affected by the IOR. And also both of these are affected a little bit by the reflection roughness, definitely the reflection and definitely the metalness value. So before we begin, basically you need to understand we've got our black, this is set to pure black. Our metalness is all the way up to one and then we've got our thin film on top of that so we have a like pure black metal uh, that's basically not even going to render if we take the thin film off so we'll just throw one on here real quick so you can see here here's the 1.5 set to 900 so at 900 you get these kind of cool green and pink colors here uh, let's open that one up and you can see if we go down here to our thin film and we take this all the way down you're going to realize it doesn't render at all, and that's because we have this set to pure black. So if you don't want this to be pure black, you can set this value up to 1%, and that way we actually have like a black metal here. And now when we add our thin film back on, we'll still have a very similar look. Okay? But it will be a little more shiny. So if you want it to be kind of more of that pure, just the thin film, you want to make sure your color here is set to pure black. So basically the way it works is a lot of the coolest colors are in the range between 200 and 400. So we've got this like purple and orange here, and then 300, we've got this kind of green and blue, and around 400, we have this sort of purple and orange, again, with a little bit of blue in there as well. So we start getting that weird little bit. So you can start sliding this around. You can see why like just having some presets would be helpful because there's a very difference between the amounts here, very small amounts, like very big differences. And then on top of that, let's say we said this is 200, Okay, we start messing with the IOR here. We turn this to 1.6. Changes, we get some more blue. 1.7. Gets even more blue. We go all the way up to 2. You see we kind of have a totally different look. And all this stuff together is very confusing. And it's a lot of just trial and error. But you get a lot of really cool looks and colors. You can take your thickness down. And you have like a, a, a this less apparent when you have the thickness down. But you really start getting the effects of it around above 100 and then once you get into like the 600s uh, you kind of from 600 up is kind of a very similar look of just the pink and green but they kind of change so you can see that in the presets which is very helpful all right so let's take a look at another use of thin film and that's to create kind of this cool bubble look and this is also included basically the way this works is inside of thin film we have our base properties all completely off and we're dealing with a transmission weight of one we want to go down here to thin walled and make sure that's checked. If that's not checked, you're going to get the refraction here and most bubbles are kind of see-through. Now you can use this to create some cool looking glasses and stuff like that. But if you want it to look like a bubble, make sure thin walled is checked. And you can see our IOR is 1.2. So we've lowered that down and our thickness is 400. If you want to increase that IOR, you can increase that up to two and you'll get more of that greenish purpley blue color in here as well. But when you see... In here it doesn't quite look the same as it does in the preview here and a lot of these things again are very dependent on reflections and lighting and i just have a big dome light on here so we've got even light coming all around and then one area light up above it to kind of get those highlights so we can go 1.2 and that creates a really nice bubble you can kind of see how the preview looks and how it looks in reality and that's because i have this bump map on here which i have included and all that is is a max on noise with wavy turbulence on plugged into the bump map and the guy that goes in there if we uncheck that you'll see we get more of a, a smooth bubble 
And so we now have this really nice clean bubble, but you can see it renders really fast. And this is just with thin film and transmission weight at one. So we've created this really cool, nice rainbow look. There's no dispersion values to mess with or anything because we're using thin, thin wall. We can get this look really quickly. So let's go back to our dragon real quick and we'll throw this sketch style on that I created. So with the white on the floor, we have this sketch style that's almost a sketch and tune type look. It's not quite, it's not gonna work the same. It's just kind of an interesting vibe to the metal. And basically all this is, if we go into our thin film here and we have it back set to our, our metalness and you can lower that value or increase that value and that's gonna affect the way that this looks. But basically what's happening here is we go in here to our thickness and we have it set to around 300, 400. These are gonna affect our colors, but we lower our IOR lower than one and we're gonna start getting where the edges are just black and it's just gonna suck that in. And basically we're gonna have less and less visible here. But as we find this middle ground in between zero and one, we're gonna start having that in between where the edges are still this like real harsh black, but then we have all these crazy colors going on. And it's just kind of a bizarre look. And it, I can see people being able to use this to make some really interesting styles and stuff to fit into some stuff. But the colors kind of work from, they go from being, they start off being kind of gold and they go into the purple and orange and they get more blue and then they get more green and pink. So it, as you slide this around and all that is also dependent on your IOR settings as well. But the same kind of pattern is going to emerge whether your IOR is up high or low, you're going to start with, with the gold. The gold and pink is going to be lower and then as you get higher up you're going to get more into that green and pink so basically if you lower your ior below one you can start increasing your thickness to bring some of these weird colors back in you can mess with the metalist values and the reflection values and you can start getting some really interesting looks so to recap, thin film has two settings, but those two settings are very dependent on several things. They are dependent on your base color. Obviously, if we bring this base color up, uh, it's gonna change it a little bit. Uh, even though we have our metalist value up to one, it's just gonna add in some color and stuff and it's gonna be weird. So for the best results, I suggest putting this down to black. So you just have that thin film coming in. Metalist value all the way up to one, you start bringing that metalist value down, you start changing the look of this as well. Once again, you're gonna go more into your color there. And then roughness in your reflection setting is going to play a big part in this. If we bring this up to 0.2, you'll see that the it changes a little bit here, but we bring this all the way up to 0.8, and we're gonna lose a lot of that film, and we're gonna end up with just kind of a, a film over top of our plastic, which is a very cool look as well. And lastly, you have the IOR and stuff to control and combination. Some really bizarre looks. So all the materials that I've created all have a roughness of, of 0.2. If you want to make them even shinier, you can change it back to zero if you want. One that I created that was kind of that I thought was kind of neat was this edge look where I used a curvature map and a material blender to add just the tint, thin film on just the curves here. I thought that was a kind of a, a neat look. Um, so a really neat way to just create all kinds of different looks. Not the simplest one to explain how it's being applied like in a physical sense uh, that makes sense with the real world stuff like that. But it obviously you kind of get the gist of how it works. And then with these previews that I'll provide, you've got 32 materials here. And they all have the settings labeled so you can get a, a gist of when this setting is set to default 1.5 IOR. You can set the thickness value of 400 to get this color, this color. So these will be just good jumping off points that already have your metal and stuff set to the right mode. And then these are bubbles here. And then we have our edge looks and a couple of those sketch style looks that have the IOR below one. So just good jumping off points to come out with I thought would be helpful. Uh, so. Be sure to click the link below to download that and be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for new notifications. Thank you guys so much for all the feedback. I've seen a lot of comments about the ramp node and the C4D shader and I will cover those in future videos. So be sure to subscribe and uh, turn your notifications on so you'll see when those come out.
In the next video, we're going to talk about the new transmission settings inside of the RS Sender material, which are really cool. You can get these really cool looks really fast. They've added new controls, so be sure to check that out too. So once you download those presets, all you need to do to install those is go to um, inside your asset browser. Just go ahead and find a folder that you want or whatever and go to create and then go to import assets. We're going to import that, open up that zip folder here, open that, and it's going to say, where do you want to put this? And you can say, okay, it's going to skip these because I have them, but yours will import successfully. And they're going to, it's going to open up an uncategorized folder and put that in there. And then you can move those around if you want. Put your own folders and stuff. It's you know, not the, the easiest to understand how it's actually working. Um, so keep that in mind. But once you have those folders created, you can just click and drag and put them in there. So if you want to put these in the thin film folder by creating a new category, uh, you can do that. So now we have all those. You can favorite the ones you're going to use often. And they'll be available in your favorites. But now whenever you open up C4D, you're going to be able to have those uh, settings there for you. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.